Is Jesus a liar, a fraud, or the Son of God? Now, this is a question you have to ask yourself if you discredit, say, that uh, Jesus isn't who he claims to be. There's only three other uh, possibilities. Um, as they phrase it, uh, he's either a liar, he lied of who he claimed to be, he lied about um, any, or that he fooled people, or that he was a madman, or a lunatic, that he was delusional. He was delusional of, uh, thought he was someone that he wasn't. So, let's discover um, who he claims to be. I mean, if he's not the son of God, he's either a liar, a fraud, or a lunatic, or delusional. So, is Jesus a liar? Did he lie of who he claimed to be? Well, the motives behind lying about uh, being claiming to be the Son of God uh, really um, it stacked up against him. He had everything to lose but nothing to gain. What what did he have to gain out of it? He didn't really. Didn't will not want a following. He didn't will not want to overthrow the government. He did not want to, to um, establish a a, a, uh, a kingdom, an earthly kingdom, right now and then in his earthly ministry. Um, so what? What really had to gain? Um, John eighteen thirty six says Jesus answered, "My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world." A worldly kingdom that I was trying to over if I was trying to overthrow or throw this government, or if I was trying to set up a this kingdom like your earthly kingdom kingdoms, then my servants would fight. They call him a king. You're the king of the Jews. No, my my kingdom is something more spiritual. My servants would fight if I was king of the Jews, but I should that I should not deliver into their hands. But now is my but now is not kingdom from hence. So he did not come to overthrow. He says um, when they question, do we pay tax to Caesar? He says, give what to Caesar's, which is Caesar's. Uh, he said, he questioned, well, whose inscription, whose picture is on that coin? It's Caesar. Caesar's uh, picture was on that coin. So it's Caesar's. So give what's due on the Caesar's, what God unto God. Let's do on the God, so he didn't come to overthrow. Uh, so Pilate says in his um, trial here, he was questioning, like uh, right around the time that he was, you know, he was being punished, he was whipped a body pulp. Uh, Pilate says, therefore say unto him, art thou a king? Are you a king then? Jesus says, you say I am a king, but the, the, you say it as you say it. Yes, of course. To this purpose, to this end was I born. For this cause I came in, I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So that's the purpose, the truth. Bear witness unto God. That is what I came to do. It's a spiritual kingdom. It had everything to lose, really. You know... Um, the, the, the little of followers that he had really like earthly sense, I would say, um, he didn't really, um, uh, he certainly wasn't getting, uh, favor, you know, popularity against the Jews, you know, claiming things he said. I mean, the, the Jews, would, everything about what he claimed to be would, would be blasphemy. He wasn't winning over any of his peers, I mean, any of the, the the nobles, it was a hurdle to get into for Jew, Jews to say anything other than father what they've been, what they know, and uh, to believe anything different. A man that God could become a man. Um, the Jews the the. the the Pharisees, the 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 Sanhedrin, the the um the no, noble 
Jews, political, high-ranking Jews, um, they had a plot to kill him. So he's in danger of being killed. He had everything to lose, nothing to gain. What would he gain out of it in an earthly sense? That many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believe on, which uh, the things which Jesus did believed on him. Many of the Jews which came and seen the things that Jesus did believed on him. So those who, the Jews who seen what Jesus did believed on him that he was Messiah. But some of their ways to the Pharisees told them that things Jesus had done. So they told the Pharisees, but the Pharisees wouldn't have it. Um, then they gathered the Jew, chief priests when the Pharisees um, then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees at council. So they uh, um, called a council and said, what should we do? What do we? What should we do? For this man doeth many miracles. For we let him thus alone. If we leave alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall take and come and take away our place in the nation. They take away our, our place in the society and our uh our power, the place we have, um, and our home, um, and one of them named Caiaphas, being a high priest, the same year said unto them, "Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. It's better for one from Hittai that we all." That we should all get in trouble, that we take our um, our meal ticket, uh, our place in the society, um, that we should suffer persecution of the Romans. Um, so they they plot to kill him. I mean, he didn't come to overthrow the government. Uh, he also he was in danger of being killed. What had he to gain? He had everything to lose. Um, Yeah, they plot to kill him um, because of blasphemy. Um, and yet he, yet he have not known him, but I know him. And if I, because what he claimed to be, he claimed to be God. He claimed to be the Son of God. That God was his Father, equaling that he was on the equal uh, was God, uh, God, um, God's equal. That he was his Son. Yet. He have not known him, but I know him. If I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him keep, and keep his sayings. He keep his word. You know, they, they were, you know, just doing the, a vain repetition. They, they're, they lost their heart um, uh, worshiping God with their heart, with love, you know, Connection says they were just outwardly, you know, and they they were proud and puffed up also. The Father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. So actually, and Jesus' son knew him more intimately than they did, of course. Your Father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet. 50 years old, you're not even 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said unto him, Very, very truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And uh, some people dispute here this, this is just that uh, it's not saying the, the divine name, uh, I am, um, you know, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yehovah, but. It is saying the claim of the divine name that he was pre existent. When they recognized what he was claiming, they pre existed Abraham. He's not even 50 years old. Abraham, he existed before, before Abraham, and he, he claimed the divine name, which is uh, to be that the self existent one. They recognized. What he was claiming. He was claiming to be the, the God, the creator, the one God creator, Jehovah. And they recognized it as blasphemy. Then they took up stones. They were stoned because of what? 
because he was blaspheming. Jesus hid himself, went out of, the, out of the temple, going through the midst of them, so passed by. Um, liars usually crack under pressure when they, you know, sometimes sometimes they slip and they can't keep up with their stories. But also when they're pressured, they, they usually give up, uh, let the cat out of the bag, so, so to speak. So he suffered a lot. I mean, he suffered a lot of persecution, just uh, questions of, um, uh, a lot of demeaning verbally, but also suffered a lot of punishment, physical punishment, a lot of agony. You would think that he would relinquish. They, that's what they did, actually. They tried to get him to, to relinquish his claim. Um, but Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us us, whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said, Thou hast said, nevertheless I say unto you, Here ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the cloud of clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What for their need we of witness? Behold, ye now have heard of his blasphemy. He was recognizing the, the divine name, the Son of Man, or the angel of days, Come, you know, that uh, coming of his appearing uh, of Yahovah coming in the clouds, the ancient days of Daniel coming in the clouds of heaven. It was, they recognized this, he's claiming to be the ancient days, God, Yahovah, Yahweh, Yahweh. And they ran to close as a sign of. Um, distress or mourning, you know, not mourning, but, uh, you know, a sign of distress, it can be a sign of mourning, but they rent and close. This is what they, the Jews usually do, a sign of distress or mourning. So you see, they were really perturbed. You see, this guy, he blasphemed. He's saying he's one God. Out on I, oh, the one Lord God out on I. So, um, so says, what do you think? He and the answer said, he is guilty of death, punishable by death. And then he, then they spit in his face. So they spit on him. Buffed him and beat him, struck him in the face, and smote him with the palms of their hands. They 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 uh, slapped, uh, hit him. Um, they grabbed at his beard, plucked out his beard. Um, trial of what be Caiaphas, the high priest. I think that's what. Yeah, the high priest um, would be Caiaphas. Um, okay, in the line of events of being crucified uh, uh, after that he was whipped, uh, he was put, put a crown of thorns. They stripped him, put a scarlet robe, a crown of thorns, pressed a crown of thorns, a, you know, a weaved wreath with like what would it be? At least an inch inch to three inches but well, I think the thorn was an inch to three inches the spikes pressed it into to a scalp so they plaited a crown of thorns put it upon his head read in his right hand and bowed the knee up before and mocked him saying hail the king of the Jews and they spat upon him and took a read and smote him on the head so that, that would be painful also. He crash under pressure. Also, they scourge him for 40 lashes. This is not just a, uh, I don't know, piece of leather. I mean, it, it had bone, like metal pellets, whatever they could find. Uh, little things tied to the end of the, to the strands of leather. 
Uh, it could be bone, it could be metal. Uh, they, they were pellets, metal pellets. And it could be like, like a spike. And uh, so he was whipped. Still didn't do nothing. He, all that persecution and questioning and through his ministry, um, that back rep uh, being beat, uh, had his beard pulled out, um, the crown of thorns being pushed in his head, um, being whipped to a bloody pulp, um, and crucified. Even on the cross, even on the cross, he kept his, he didn't change his tune. We'll read what he said on the cross. He didn't change his tune. And when they were come to the place, which was called Calvary, and there were crucified him and malefactors, one on the right and on the, and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know what know not what they do. They parted their, his raiment and cast lots. Forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. They do not know what they're doing. Forgive them, Father. He went on the cross, offering forgiveness. You know, forgive them. Even being nailed to the cross while he was on the cross. Praying that the Father would forgive them. Don't weigh the charge that they would repent, repent and be forgiven. So he didn't change the tune of being, being um, persecuted and being tortured. I don't know how he could not crack her under that pressure. Also, the, his, liar, his morals, uh, the morals that he taught, uh, that he held and that he taught, didn't really point to a liar. A liar usually uh, has some type of... Um, ulterior motives and um, mani they manipulate and all, all types of things. But what did he teach? He taught, love thy neighbor. He says, love God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. First greatest commandment. Second commandment is like unto it, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. So loving your neighbor as you would love yourself, the same kind of uh, treatment that you want to be treated, the same, the same um, manner as you would love yourself, as you, as you care for yourself, you care for others. To treat others, to treat others, in a good manner, not just kind, uh, being nice to them, but a real kindness and a grace. I mean, this is different, that you're not holding grudge. It's not um, insult for insult, tooth for tooth, punch for punch, hit for tat. No. Um, if you have wronged, you've done some evil, stole your car, you don't steal your other car, you don't steal their car. Um, really, we're not to wish evil, uh, wish uh, ill on others. You have heard it been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. It's told to love your enemies. I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. They, if you get insulted, you're treated badly. You're treated bad by by an individual. You should bless them and give them, you know, anything. Uh, the the kind of um, um, emotion or whatever whatever that you uh, dish out to them um, that you see them that you bless them. You treat them with kindness. Even though they do not show kindness to you, you do good to them. Feed them, give them thirsty, uh, give them drink. Um, if they're stranded, help them. Kind of a different thing. 
you know, to hold grudges. Pray for them. Pray for them that despite we use you, that uh, take advantage of you, persecute you. It's kind of a hard thing. Um, say if someone killed, uh, like someone chopped the head off of your your son. Pray for them. Pray that they find mercy in God's eyes, that they repent. Kind of a different hard thing to do. Um. Show kindness and love, not and not to be stuck off of those. I mean, the only you don't only talk to those uh, wish um, greet and so, show kindness and talk to those who only uh, that you only get along with. It says if you love them which love you, what to reward do you have? Know, do not even the publicans do the same? Don't even the the lost people. But what are you doing more than the lost people, the, the unbelievers? What are you doing more than the lost people that uh, you only show kindness and love towards those who you get along with? And if you only sleep, salute your brother only, what are you doing more than the, uh, the unbelievers? Also, when someone's been down, uh, down and out, that you help them, like the Samaritan. Like the parable of Samaritan, the Samaritan was robbed, beaten, left for dead on the side of the road. And the, the kind of busy body uh, stuck up uh, Pharisee, they, they, they wouldn't even cross their path. But the Samaritan, certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound his wounds, pouring in oil. Wine and set him on his own beast, on, on his own, either like his donkey or his horse, brought him in to an inn and took care of him. And it uh, seemed like he was more wealthy that uh, when he, was, when he uh, the guy uh, regained his health, he sent him out, not empty handed, but gave him some money, provide for him that he. Provided his well for his well being. Something that we should mirror. That Jesus taught this. Why why would he, if he wanted to manipulate people, why would he say that it helped the downtrodden? I cannot <laughs> answer that. If he was a liar, why help the less fortunate? Why? If, if they're not doing good, you, I mean, whatever benefits you, steal from the poor. Why not? Why not steal from the poor? It benefits me. No, give to the poor because it benefits them and it, and it blesses and it, and it uh, glorifies God. So next is, he's not a liar. But is he a fraud? Did he do, did um, the things that he claimed that he did? He couldn't really do. Could was he a fraud? Well, Jesus didn't really seek for wealth. He wasn't really seeking for you know trying to rip people off. Uh, he wasn't you know what did he teach on money? I mean, the the love of money, the greed. And covetousness was uh, was not good. It comes from an evil heart, greed. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. <laughs> you go through many sorrows. It's a burden, a lot of burdens, um, getting wealth, material things. It is... It is uh, a burden, so trying to keep them all nice that they um, accumulate uh, 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 you know value. They accumulate value. Trying to keep them, trying to keep them nice. Uh, trying to keep them from robbing. It's a burden. 
uh, also uh, wronging people for the sake of benefiting to get them one leg up. You get a lot of sorrows. Also, you, you can't really serve God in wealth. You know, you'll love more, you love uh, love wealth more than God. You only should love God. Read. You take your eyes. If you set your uh, eyes, if you serve wealth, you'll take your eyes off of God. You you don't really you, you don't really see that uh, any they, you don't really depend on him because you depend on what you can do and what you can acquire and this is all I need all of my material things so no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and mammon. We are told not to uh, acquire material things, the treasures that are hard to be on material things, but things, uh, spiritual things, things that are in heaven. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break in through and steal. People can steal it away from you. Lay not your heart upon the treasure upon earth, where it's only temporary. They break down. They fade away. Set your heart on heavenly things that does does not that are eternal. Is not temporary. It's not temporary. Does not fade away. Does not get old. But lay up in yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor doth corrupt, where the thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, your heart be also. Also, to give to the poor, so not just food, not just uh, um, money, you know, just give money, whatever they need, clothes, uh, toothbrush, uh, medical supplies. I showed you all things, how that so living you ought to support the weak, support the weak in their physical needs or spiritual needs, medical needs, whatever they need. <laughs> um, uh, defend the weak from evil. That can be too. To remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Though he didn't really part, that's it was the view on money. What, he didn't really, you know, trying to make a living off of people. So he can't like be a rip, uh, a con man to rip them off. Um, a fraud, did he, did he talk a big game? He claimed that he could move mountains, but he couldn't. Uh, the signs confirmed Jesus' words. He backed the things that he did, backed up who he claimed to be. And when he's entered into the ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. There was a storm. And so much the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him, awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto him, Where, why are ye fearful, o ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and they were, and there was a great calm. But, but the men marvelled, saying, What manner of man, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Is this who is this guy? Is he just a mere man? What man can command the, the, the winds and the sea that it shouldn't be? I mean, it should be. This is not no mere man. He, he has to be something more. Peter answered and said, Lord, if thou, so that this, him walking on the water, I think this is like two different events the storm and the who more on walking on that Jesus walked on the water. Peter um, asked, implored, give him the power to walk on the water to come to him. Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come, 
came down out of the ship. He walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was afraid. And when he see the winds and the waves, he was so afraid. And he began to doubt. He, be, he began to doubt, then he began to sink. And he cried to Jesus, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And they were, and when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased, and they that were in the ship came to worship, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. They were, they, they seen what happened. So they were convinced. Like this is the son, son of God and the Messiah. And he did things that that the prophecy that was prophesied that this is how you would know the Messiah. The blind received their sight. Tell them, tell them, tell these leaders that the blind receive their sight. The lame walk, the lepers cleanse, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. This is how the Messiah come. That the Lord, I mean, the Lord will come in the days prophesied in Isaiah 35, verse 4 and 6. Now, also, he had the power to cast out devils. And if I will be as above, Cast out devils by Satan. But if I do this by the power of Satan, by whom do your children cast them out? In what name, if I cast out by the power of Satan, by the name of Satan, who do you, who, what, in what name do you, you people cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God is coming back to you. The Lord has come. That that is the proof. That is the proof. If I cast out by the Spirit of God, by the finger of God, I'm the Messiah. I have come. <laughs> So, was Jesus just delusional? Was he a madman? Did, did he believe something that was not true? I mean, no, no matter how genuine he believed in this, was he just deceived or delusional? Um, the crowds, the, the townspeople, they seemed like that he had great wisdom. He drew crowds. He drew people in with the words that he spoke. That the wisdom, the great wisdom that was divine, that came from the divine, that came from above, from God the Father, drew them in. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, and so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with for with authority commanded he even this unclean merits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region around about Galilee. Fame, this kind of word, the word of mouth, this news that the, the thing that he did said to the unclean spirit, come out of him. And he came out of him. They're all amazed. With what authority does he command the, the devil? that he commanded the devil to leave. And the word spread. Then again, he entered Capernaum for some, after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, and so much there were no room to receive him, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto him. And the one sick of the palsy, I mean, he crowds filled the doorway. He gathered so much people that uh, the, the, the one that 
would seek to be healed of a palsy. He couldn't get in, so they lowered him down, um, down out of the, uh, out of, out of the, the ceiling. And when Jesus saw their faith, and he said on, unto the one that was sick of the palsy, "Son, thy sins forgiven thee; for sins are forgiven." Also, he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and scribes and chief people sought to destroy him. They could not find what they may, might do, for all the people were attentive to, uh, attentive to hear him. They, they sought to hear from him. Also, if, they, um, if this was like a legend or that he was a fraud um, or a fraud or a man man that um the gospel recorded this accusation that he if there if this was cleverly written up to to make it be believable that he was who he said he was they want to include this accusation of that he was um a man man or something that people doubted or say that he's um you know, saying, and multitude, the multitude together again, gathered together, come, cometh together again, so that they could not see so much as eat bread. And when he, his friend heard of it, so his friends, his brethren, his um, kinsmen, also his family, and they went out to lay a hold on, for they said, he's beside him. He's not really thinking clearly. Whatever in whatever degree I do or not know, but he was not thinking clearly, and that's what they thought of him. I mean, whatever he was doing, cast out devils, um, claiming to be this and that. The scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath boils above him, by the prince of devils he cast out devils. And he called on to him and said unto him, Parables, how can Satan cast out kids? Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. Also, the, this was the accusation by the Pharisees to discredit him, to uh, bring an accusation to persecute him. So they have something to sentence him, and so they would, you know, get locked up or get, uh, that he would be put to death. No man taketh it from me, but I lay down myself. I, power to lay, I have power to lay it down. My life, I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. This command I received of my father. There was a division, of, therefore, again among the Jews for their saying, for these things. You know, they were puzzled. They, they were, you know, up in an uproar, and many of them said, "He hath the devil and is mad. Why? Why do you listen to him? Why hear him?" Others said, "He is not." Others said, these are not of words of him that have a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? So they, they did not come, come into an argument here. He's, he's insane. He, he's, he, we know he has a devil now. So the gospel records this accusation. If this were cleverly devised, uh, devised uh, fable, Wanted to have this kind of, these details to make it to uh, these details that would discredit him. He wouldn't. Um, so it is the only other option. He's not a liar. It's not a fraud. He's not uh, delusional. So he has to be the Son of God. Jesus claims to be the Son of God. Jesus answered, It's not written in your law that I said you are God. And if yeah, I called them, and if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God gain, came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified, and sent into the world, thou blasphemest. You say unto him that the Father sent, you blaspheme, because I said I am the Son of God. Say claim this, I am, because I said I am the Son of God, claim the Son of God. Uh, John 14, 13, Whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that I that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So he claimed to be Son there. 
These words spake Jesus, lifted up his eyes to him and said, Father, the hours come, glorify thy son. So he left up, he's talking about himself. He says, Father, he called God Father and said that he was his son, that I say, son may also glorify thee. John 3, 14, 18. And Moses lifted up, uh, up, the bronze, uh, up the serpent in the wilderness, the bronze serpent, even so must the son be, be lifted up. So the bronze serpent, many who behold the bronze serpent was healed from the snake bites. So must those who behold, those who look upon Jesus, that will, that will be lifted up on the cross, will be healed. Whoever behold have faith in him. And whoever believed in him, see, whoever believeth on the one that would be raised up um, on the cross or on the bronze serpent, believeth in him, shall not perish, have ever, or everlasting life. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, his only son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The son of man, his son, Whoever behold the lifted up on the cross shall have eternal life. So he called himself God, the God sent is God not God for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed the name of the only begotten Son of God, talking about himself, that he must be lifted up as a bronze servant be. That you be healed of the whole uh, of your sin, of the the wound, your daily wound, which is sin. So, Son of Man, Son of God, who believe in the Son of God, that it's me, I shall be lifted up on the cross. And the Son of God. And Jesus' testimony is true, because he says, um, if I just testify myself, my testimony is not true. Um because it takes the witness of two men for the testimony to be true. And if I judge, my judgment is true. I judge, for I'm not alone, but I and the Father that sent me, too. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I'm the one that bear witness of myself, the Father that sent me, bear witness of me. According to the law, there is, you know, the judgment of uh, judging any matter um, had to be two or three witnesses. Anybody who there has to be at least two, two to three that would agree upon any type of matter. Witness, one witness shall not not rise up against a man for any iniquity, for any sin, and any sin that he sinned. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. So according to law, you know, so my testament, my testimony is true because to, according to the law, mouth of two, every word be established. So the testimony of two, the Father, we see that the Father um, and the Spirit witness that this is the Son. He directly called Jesus his Son. And Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straight away out of the water. When John the Baptist baptized, he, he rose up the water. As he rose up out of the water, the heavens were opened onto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Also, Moses, the word of the law, the law of Moses, the Old Testament scriptures uh, testify of him that the Father that the Father testify of the, that he is the Son through his word, the Old Testament scriptures. For, he, for had he believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me, he testified of me. His, the, the proof that he is the Son of God, I mean the Old Testament scriptures, Testate that he, I'm the Messiah, I'm the ruler, I claim to me. If you believe not his writings, see, if you do not, you do not believe Moses. If you, if you believe Moses, you were believed 
me because he wrote of me, he testified on me. You don't believe his words. He wrote of me, he described who I would be and how, what manner I would come in, um, prophesied and stuff. But you do not believe him. So if you do not believe him, how should you believe me, my words? So his testimony is true. Also, Jesus could only do what God could do. Um, he healed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said on the sixth of palsy, Son, thy sins will forgive me. Only God can forgive sin. And the scribes, the, the Pharisees, um, said this. And he, they charged him with blasphemy. But there was a certain scribe sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive but only God only? Immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit that they saw reason with themselves, he said unto them, Why are you reason ye these things in your hearts? So there's the second thing. Why reason why reason ye these things? Why do you um, think of these things in your heart? He, they, he knew their thoughts, what they were thinking. Only God can search, uh, see in your heart. Only God can do that. So he has to be God. Psalm 139 is, says, God search the heart and knows the thoughts, knows your thoughts, knows your desires. Search me, O oh God, know my heart, try me, know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way of everlasting. So only God can do that. And you see, well, why do you reason these things in our hearts? If you do not, if that's not proof enough that Jesus um, saw, saw what they're within their hearts, um, he knew what type of man or what heart, what spirit uh, Nathaniel came in. And then Nathaniel said unto him, Can there be any good thing to come out Nathers? And Philip saith unto him, Come and see. So Philip went to get the Nathaniel to bring to Jesus, bring him to Jesus. And Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, Israel in, 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 in whom is no God. He, he knew his heart. He knew he was an up, upstanding fellow without even really that he's not really that they never acquainted. And then he wasn't acquainted with him. And he said, On oh, whence thou knowest me? When, when, where do you know me from? He said, Before Philip called you to bring you to me, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw you. I saw thee. He so said, He was a King of Israel, son of God. It's only he could do it. His testimony is true because the father bear witness of him as well as he. Um, they had um, that God directly told the disciples that this is my son and the Old Testament scripture testing that his testimony is true. That he, that he claimed to be God. That's, that he claimed to be son of God and God. And his words is backed up by proof by his miracles that he calmed the sea, um, healed the sick, forgave sins on a prerogative only um, God could do, only God to forgive sins, and only God can see with it, see, see a, a person's thoughts and judge their heart. So let's see, Jesus is not a liar. He is not a liar. He's not a fraud. He could do what he said he could do. And he's not delusional. Not only can be that he is who he said he is, the Son of God. And you should place your faith in him because your eternal destination is at stake. Are you going to spend eternity with him or without him? Because Spend eternity in heaven or hell to our choice to go wisely. Hopefully, this helps you with sin next time. Thank you and take care.